All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our next video on environmental science and specifically going over the ecological footprint. Let's get started on this next video. So an ecological footprint, what is it? Well, ecological footprint is going to be a measure of the ecological assets that a given population requires to produce a natural resource it consumes. So if we think about resources that we're going to go through and consume as a society, and we think about our ecological footprint, we have cropland, we have grazing products, maybe forest products, we have fishing products, we have land use, and then we also have our energy uses and all the things that are associated with that. Now, population growth can unquestionably lead to environmental problems. However, it's not just the number of people on Earth, but how we go through and consume that is to blame. Resource consumption can be quantified using the ecological footprint, and this was developed in the 1990s by an environmental scientist, Matthias Walker Nagel and William Rees. And remember, all it's doing is expressing the environmental effects of an individual or a population in terms of the total amount of land and water required to provide raw materials to the individual or population and to go through and dispose of or recycle the wastes of an individual or a population. So the ecological footprint concept is commonly applied to humans, but every organism, natural and or synthetic object has this footprint. Now, there is no real universal way to calculate an ecological footprint. When looking at the footprint of a potato, for example, one group of researchers may only include the resources needed to grow the potato, while the other group is going to go through and include the resources needed to cook the potato as well. When comparing footprints, however, it does not matter what approach is used to calculate the footprint values as long as it is used consistently. In this way, ecological footprints can be enormously useful as a tool to compare resource use across individuals or populations. So for example, one set of calculations, the average American has an ecological footprint of about 3.5 times the national global average. Residents of other nations such as Chile, Cuba, Canada, and Australia are consuming resources at a rate less than the global average. So we need to go through and think about these things when we're going through and looking at the ecological footprint. So what are going to be the main contributing factors to our ecological footprint? Well, we need to think about things that go into it, our energy use. We need to think about our settlement use, where we go through and build our homes, our forest product use, our timber and paper use. We also need to think about our food use, and we wanna go through and think about our water use here. All five of these things are going to go through and be included in our calculations for the ecological footprint. Now, we already gone through and talked about what the United States ecological footprint is. But if we go through and look at the map, which country actually has the smallest ecological footprint? It might actually surprise you. It is Cuba. And Cuba is and has the smallest ecological footprint because of some of the embargoes that were put on Cuba during the nuclear crisis. So Cuba really hasn't gone through and had a whole lot of things imported into their country. We can see in these pictures, we see all these really old cars from the you know early 40s, 50s, and 60s here. And we can see that because there is not a whole lot being imported, Cubans have to really go through and use their resources well. They have to go through and recycle everything because of the embargoes here. So if we're looking at the country that actually has the smallest footprint, well, it's going to be Cuba because they have a very limited amount of things that get imported into their country. Therefore, they reuse and they recycle everything and keep everything in as best of shape as possible for the longest period of time. All right, so did you guys learn? Well, did you learn a couple of things? Did you guys go through and learn about what the ecological footprint is? Did you guys go through and learn about what contributes to ecological footprint? And then did you guys go through and learn what country contributes the least towards the Earth's ecological footprint? This is going to be the end of the video. Well, we'll see you all in class tomorrow.